Hello everyone, I am Bradley Swart, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. This video today is going to look at a problem from week 11 or week 12 or week 10. It all depends on when you're taking this class, spring or fall. Um, we're going to look at conditional processing part one, the homework example, and I'm looking at the first problem right now. And so that problem is as such develop an x86 assembly language program that executes an is even function. So you would do something like bool is even. This is how you, you know, basically if it's, if it's even, return a true, and if it's odd, return a false. And then we're gonna use that function in the main and test it out, make sure everything's working properly. So let me just do the main, let me move this over a little bit, and then we can do the main and then we can kind of fall back here. So I want to prompt the user, prompt byte, and then enter value. Okay, and then remember the null terminating zero. And to get this thing to print, I'll have to move into the EDX register, the offset of that, the pointer to that array of bytes, call write string. And let's just test this out just to make sure my compiler's working and Assembler's working, everybody's happy, and it looks like there it is, enter a value, everybody's happy. Okay, so allow the, the user to enter their input, that's read int, and the EAX register will hold whatever the user puts in after this line of code gets put out, and then I'm going to, I'm, go I'm going to, well, I'm, I might as well just do it here, I'm going to call uh, is even, and let me just get things going here, I'll say is even proc, put a ret in here, and then is even end p. And so that's, that'll get that going. That'll, so basically the EA, you know, and the EAX will go in, the EAX will come out, at least for now, and when we're done with it too. And then let the, let the function do its work and return the correct value. And then we say, I need to have, I'll say even, Byte, and then, oops, this will be uh, the value is, oops, the value is e, exclamation point, comma, zero, and then odd, value is odd, and now my only question is, are these, for some strange reason, are these things going to be keywords somehow, even byte, maybe even? Let me just, just for the sake of trying this out, because sometimes you just don't know. Yep, so I guess even somehow is a keyword or something like that, or I'm not exactly sure what. But you can see now I'll use ev and od instead of even and odd for the prompts. And let's just get the, you know, say, what do I do now? Do I do the function first, or do I complete everything? Um, but the, the theory is here, let me just write this out here, that e, the input will be eax and it'll be some value. And then the output, the output will be some value, and it'll go into EAX, and it'll be, you know, one if, if even, else, zero, odd. That's the whole thought process, right? Okay, so then coming back down here, you go, okay, this is what you can't just call functions and do things like that. I'll have to compare EAX to zero. And jump if, you know, jump if equal, jump if zero, jump if equal, jump if equal to uh, odd case. And then if we get to here, this will be the even case. And I will just go, let me just, let me just kind of show you here, um, odd case. And sometimes I like to put labels in, even though if you, even if you never explicitly use them, just so it makes kind of like commenting your code in a way. Because if I fall through here and this thing comes back as a one, this will not be equal. It will fall through. This will be the even case. And I'll want to move into edx register, the offset of ev, and then I will call write string. And then just so I don't fall through, I'll have to do an unconditional jump to, I'll just call it done. So I need a few labels here to get this thing done. And then the, the other thing here is something like this. 
And what's interesting here is I'm calling right string no matter what, so I can actually bring that down past here. There's no reason to duplicate my code. It's just a matter of which, you know, what pointer should go into EDX, and then I can jump around and do what I need to do to call the right string. This should work at this point, not properly, of course, but it should do something. So if I enter a value uh, 0, it'll say the value is odd. And if I enter a value of 1, it'll say the value is even. So that's what I was expecting to see. A 0 comes back odd because it's not, not even, and a 1 will come back even. Now I just have to fix up this is even function, and, uh, and then we're, we can call it a day. So there's a big difference if you've gone through the PowerPoints and, and looked at all these things that you don't need to use the modulus operator. And so coming back to it, the modulus operator is just a division. And a division is one of the slowest operations you could possibly perform on your CPU. And an AND operation just takes one clock cycle. And it gets us to the same place. So why wouldn't you start using that uh, throughout all of your programming and not just for this class? It's just a way to speed things up. Don't do a division if you don't have to. And so you, we can do an AND, and remember EAX is our input, right? We, whatever comes through, through here is our EAX register goes passed into here. And we could AND it with 1, but that's a destructive, and that's a destructive operation. EAX will be modified. And so I would think a test would be a better option here since I don't want to modify EAX register. I really don't need to. There's no need to. I just need to flip all of the uh, necessary flags as if it were an AND operation. So this is perfect. I can perform an AND operation. I don't destroy EAX in the process. And now, I say, like, there are other ways to do this, but I want, I want you guys, you know, I want to teach comparisons and things like that. That's the, the theory behind this week's understanding. So I can com compare, I'm sorry, if I'm going to do a test, I need to jump if uh, the zero, the zero flag is set. And if the zero flag is set, then that means that this is an even number. So if it's not zero, I can say this is, is you know, is odd case. I think I can use the same labels here. Okay. And what I want to do here is I want to move into the EAX register. If I fall through and it's even, put a 1 in here. Jump to done, like I did before. And if it's an odd case, I want to move 0 into EAX. I'm not saying this is the most efficient. There are certainly other ways to do it without using comparisons like that. But I think this will cover it. And if not, I'll fix it up. So let's see what happens now. I run this through and I go 11, 11 comes back odd, 12 comes back even, uh, let's see, 0, 0 comes back even, drag this every time, negative 3 comes back odd, let me do this two more times, they go blah 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 blah, 2 comes back even, and blah 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 blah, blah 7, that comes back odd. So it looks like I have my, I have my case here. And you would just reverse this if you wanted to, like if I wanted the even case. There's nothing saying I can't reverse the logic because I'm just, you know, is even or is odd. It's just the, it's just reverse logic. So I'm testing EAX with one. I'm flipping the necessary flags. In this case, all I care about is the zero flag. Do I come, is there a zero or a one that comes back when I do my non-destructive and? And if it's non-zero, that means it has to be a one. That means if, it, if a one comes back with this, that means the number is odd. And so I come back down here, move zero into EAX, return. And if it isn't, I fall through, I set it to one, and I come back and I finish. So another thing to notice here is that there's only one return statement in here. Uh, I'll see many students have many, many return statements too, right? One for the even case, one for the odd case. And as much as it works, when we get to chapter 8 stuff and we're dealing with, uh, we're dealing with pushes and pops and the call time stack and all sorts of crazy stuff that uh, we're going to deal with in a few weeks, that it's just impractical for you to do that. Uh, and also, you know, th that's the reason why you may have heard the one in, one out principle when it comes to functions. 
that you should only have one input or one way into the function and one way out of the function. And it's basically for that reason, especially way back in the day when you were writing your own code, it would just be, it was just a, a, a mess to be able to do that. And thank goodness for high level languages, it lets us get away with that stuff, but at the end of the day, it's still, you know, you should do your best to obey the one in, one out principle. And, um, you know, say I abuse that too sometimes when I work with my code. So that covers everything that there is to do about this problem. And again, there are easier ways to do this, but I just wanted to show you a way that used the comparison statement. Um, so if you have any questions or concerns, as always, you can email me at swordb at cod.edu, or you can uh, comment below here on YouTube, and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. So let me, let me just get this up on one page for you, or one, one view. You can see everything here. Come on. Almost there we go. And um, so there you have the final solution. And thanks for sticking it out as always with me. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.